His eyes is flowing through my veins. His life is flowing through my veins. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. Oh. Oh, I believe in you. I believe in 
Rakasande le brevete le bahande. Receive your touch, receive your healing. The God of you, miracles is in the room. Cause I believe in you.
If you need a miracle this morning, this is your time to intercede and remind yourself of the faithfulness of the Lord. Oh, that is who you are. Come on, can we raise it on one time? Oh, that is who you are. Oh, that. something on this oh miracles oh signs and wonders hey, miracles signs and wonders you are the God of miracles, miracles, signs and wonders, miracles, signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Come on, just, just extend your hand like this as you're receiving from the Lord. Miracles. Hey. Signs and wonders. Oh, miracles. Signs and wonders, cause that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Oh, that is who you are. I believe because I believe in you I believe in you you're the God of me I believe in you name of the Lord Jesus Christ God we worship you God and we adore you we thank you Lord God for your weighted presence that is in this place oh God 
Lord God, we have come to declare, God, to the world, to the nations, God, and to the earth, God, that you are the God of miracles, oh God. Father God, manifest yourself in this place on today, Lord God. Move in the lives of your people, Lord God, that people will know that you are still the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. You are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Oh God, you change not, God. You're still a miracle working God. You're still raising the dead. You're still opening blind eyes. You're still causing the lame to walk, oh God. Oh God, let the spirit of miracles, God, fall down in this place, oh God. Sanctify this altar, Lord God, with the holy fire of God. Release the angels in this place, oh God. Open our ears that we may hear what the spirit God is saying in this place on today, God. God, we believe in you, God. And we know, God, your word says that miracle signs and wonders shall follow them that believe, God. We are those people, God. We thank you, God, that you are the God of miracles, oh God. Oh my Oh God, let your spirit rest upon our hearts this morning, oh God. God, do something for your people, God, that each and every person, God, that came on today, God, be changed in your glory, God. Be transformed on this mountain this morning, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God. We give you praise, we give you glory, Lord, and we give you honor, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And the people of God said amen. Amen, amen, amen. Put your hands together. Let's give God a good praise in here. Amen. Amen, amen. We came to serve God. We came with a purpose this morning. Amen. Don't drive all the way here and sit down on God. Greet your neighbor as you're being seated in the house of the Lord and welcome to Global Fellowship Church here in the Dallas, Texas area. Amen. My name is Lady Sylvia, and these are your announcements for today, Sunday, January the 14th, 2024. Amen. Thank you, worship team, for leading us into the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We want to greet our Global Fellowship family members. We are delighted to see you. It's a little chilly on this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. But we made it to the house of the Lord. Amen. We let nothing hinder our intimacy and our worship with the Lord. Amen. So welcome, family members. If you are watching us online, nationally, or around the world, or whatever uh, social media platform, we also want to welcome you and say thank you for joining us on today. There is no distance in the realm of the spirit. So tap into all that the Lord has for you. Come with a listening ear to hear what the spirit of the Lord is speaking this morning. I guarantee that you will be blessed. Amen. If you are a first time visitor in the house this morning, would you please raise your hand really high where we can see you? Amen. 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 Well, if you are uh, on watching for the first time online, we would love for you to come visit us in person so we can get to know you on a deeper level. We are so very glad that you could join us here at GFC. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Our service times here at GFC are at 10 o'clock a.m. on Sunday morning, 5 o'clock p.m. on Sunday morning, Wednesday recharge service at 7 o'clock p.m., and Miracle Night every last Friday of the month. So you want to take an opportunity to be in the house of the Lord each and every time that you can. I love what my sister said last Sunday. Your breakthrough may be in that service. Amen. Her testimony just blessed me. So you want to take an opportunity to whenever the doors of the church are open. Amen. Amen. Please don't miss our prophetic encounter this Thursday with our own Dr. Joseph. Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. You want to tune in. Make sure you set your reminder by liking our GFC Facebook page. And we're also on YouTube at the same time we go live. These are very enlightening, life-changing, informing. You're going to get wisdom. You're going to get truth. And you're going to get an understanding that would transform your life. So you want to tune in and tell a friend. Amen. Our own Minister McCoy will be hosting a worship event called Together in Worship. Woo! Yes. Amen. Do I have any worshipers in the house? 
Amen. This Saturday, uh, January the 20th at 6.30 p.m., please invite all your family and friends. Make it a family night. Make it a date night. Make it a church group night. Make it a youth night. Just come on out. Um, there's going to be a unique experience that you do not want to miss. Amen. Amen. And each and every worshiper is qualified to lead us into the presence of the Lord, so you don't want to miss it. Um, here is a night of miracles to start off 2024. Next week, Friday, the 26th of January at 7 o'clock p.m. Please start inviting right now. If you know anyone who needs healing of any nature, someone who is hungry for the word, anyone who needs a miracle, please invite them to our miracle service night for a life-changing encounter. And we have a video that we would like to share with you about Miracle Night. Amen. And if God is healing you right now, right now. Sunday, January the 28th, we will host a new members class at 2 p.m. This will be in between services. If you are new to the house, please make sure you register your name with Dr. Lungi over here in the beautiful white suit. Amen. At the end of service, you can expect a call from our administrative team during this week. Lunch and child care will be provided for you and your family. Amen. It's Amen. So we look forward to meeting with you all. On Saturday, the 3rd of February, from 10 o'clock a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m., we will have a full day leadership and development seminar for our serve team and partners. Praise the Lord, somebody. Yes. Everyone currently serving in any capacity or those who are interested in serving, or if you partner with the house, please come. If you know someone who wants to serve or you know someone who that would be good in, any, in, in a certain area, please invite them to come out. Um, breakfast and lunch will be provided. Amen. Amen. These in my these in my announcements, if you would please stand to your feet to welcome the prophet and the father of this house, our own Dr. Joseph Munya. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Clap your hands, all ye people. And make a joyful noise. Can we can we have a joyful noise in the house? Amen. Just raise your hands and pray in tongues, if you don't mind. Just pray in tongues. Come on, as loud as you can. Pray in tongues. For he that speaks in tongues edifies himself. Come on, as loud as you can. Come on, as loud as you can. Those of you in your homes, join in. Join in. Join in. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues, pray in tongues, pray in tongues. Edify yourself. Pray until depression breaks. Pray until anxiety breaks. Pray until frustration breaks. Pray until worry breaks. Father, we thank you today. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who gives us victory. Thank you for the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Now I pray that the Spirit of God would raise the standard. In Jesus' name, we crush every limitation. We crush everything that the enemy is trying to do in our lives. 
and we release the blessings of God. We release the doors in our lives. We release provision in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name and somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say better amen. 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 amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Now, those of you that are in your homes, I promise you we have heaters in our church. So you don't have an excuse to stay home because it's cold. If we meet outside, I give you permission, stay home. But it's warm in, it's actually a little too warm in here. Yeah, it's, it's pretty warm. So if you can turn off, more, not off, but if you can lower the, the heater up front here. I'm cooking up here. I'm really cooking up here. For an hour and a half, I'll stand here. I need, you know, when I start preaching, more especially today, I'm going to bring a prophetic message. Amen. Yes. Uh, and then, Abel, uh, I need, I need um, the sound here sounds really, I sound like I'm in a container. Can you please fix my mic? All right. Thank you. Um, we have a testimony because this is a healing house. Amen. God is constantly healing people. Amen. And uh, I, I was given the medical report. Who has access to my office here? Um, here, can you, on top of my desk, I have the medical report. If you can, can bring that up, please. Because sometimes people think this healing thing is just, yeah. is just talk. So when we prophesy and we declare you healed, you are truly healed. You are truly healed. I, I am a firm believer that Jesus still heals. Say that with me. Jesus still heals. So if you were ever diagnosed with a condition, I want you to know that Jesus still heals. If you are battling a condition, I want you to know that Jesus still heals. Say amen to that. Amen. The problem we have is many of us, we get to the place where we believe that science is better than Jesus. It is okay to use science, you know, drink the medication. But I would rather I try Jesus first. Can, 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 I, can I say that one more time? Because as the, as the earth remains, there are some of us that are going to be dealing with stuff that science will have no clue what it is. So have faith in the Lord that he heals. Have faith in the Lord that he heals. Tell your neighbor, Jesus is my healer. So those of you, I don't know who needs to hear this that's watching from, from, from home. I want you to receive Jesus as your healer today. And he will heal your infirmities. He will heal your disease. And the church say? Amen. I have a medical report here. And um, Yolanda, yes. please come up here. Amen. And Oh, you want to you wanna right where you are? You want to come up? Okay, right, right where she is. Let me get a mobile camera, please. And, um, and, and then put, put her on the, uh, on the, um, on the screen. I have the results. I'm looking at them. Some of the medical terms are a little bit harder for me to pronounce because I'm a, I'm a theologian, not a medical doctor. Cardiovascular Institute. Did I say that right? Because we have a lot of medical experts in this section here. They are all looking at me like, oh, Jesus, help him, help him. <laughs> all right. Media guys, I'm waiting on you as soon as she hits the screen. Because I need everybody to see who's testifying. Yeah. Amen. I need people to see her. I need somebody to tell somebody that there is a church where healing still takes place. Amen. There is a church where healing takes place. Amen. Can, can we try that one more time? Yeah. Tell your neighbor there's a church there where, healing where healing still takes place. Amen and amen. All right, I'm waiting on the media, guys. There we go. So, over to you, Victor. Please go ahead and tell us, what am I looking at here? What was your condition and what has happened to your body? Okay, so a few Sundays ago, I came to the altar because I was having heart palpitations and that my heart kept fluttering and skipping beats. 
And so Pastor prayed for me, and I told him when he laid his hands on me, I had to feel to make sure I was still sitting in my seat. I felt like I was laying back. But God healed me. And my medical report is that I was in the hospital this past weekend as well for the same thing. But I know when I got uh, prayed for that I was already healed, so I knew that was just an attack. And they couldn't figure out what was going on, so they admitted me. But the report came back that they couldn't find anything. The EKG was clear. The CT scans were normal. The uh, lab works, they came back normal. The uh, X-ray was normal. They couldn't find anything wrong with my heart. So when I went to the cardiologist, he discovered the same thing. He told me, there's nothing wrong with you. You have a heart as a young person. There's nothing wrong with your heart. So I just thank God. Can, can we put our hands together and give God a better praise than that? Amen, amen and amen. Amen, amen. Tell your neighbor, God still heals. Amen and amen. Uh, I need my mic fixed, if you guys can keep working on, on the mics. I'm, I'm looking at the medical here. It says everything is normal. Literally normal. If, if you are believing God for healing right where you're seated, raise your hands. Father, I pray for the healing of the body, the soul, the spirit, the mind, the emotions. I pray even for the healing of the finances, the healing of the careers, the healing of the business, because you are the Lord that heals. I pray that you heal in Jesus' name. And somebody shout, amen. 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 Thank you for sharing that. Amen. I understand that God heals, and because he loves you, he will heal whatever it is that you are going to be diagnosed with. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. On, on, on um, the, the beginning of this month, I began to share with you guys what the Lord had put on my spirit, and that is to be established in the Lord and I want to encourage you guys that this, this teaching is very important to establish you not only this year, but to carry you throughout your life. Amen. It's very, very important that you get committed to hearing the word of the Lord. In fact, I want to extend a challenge. Um, I did post a challenge since Tabrisha, I don't know where Tabrisha is. Tabrisha got me on TikTok and we, we be reaching thousands of people every week. So I, I posted a challenge on talk TikTok and, and, and uh, last week I talked about it. Let me challenge those of you that are in the house as well. Is that okay? Yes. So there are three things I'm challenging everyone that's here and those of you that are watching on, on, uh, on, on your TV screens. Three things I want to challenge you between now and December uh, 31st, 2024. Number one is, I want to challenge everyone here to work on your body until you become very healthy. So for the next 12 months, you are going to do whatever it takes for you to become very healthy. The, those amens, I can, I can hear, I think only Mina in the back, the rest of you, the rest of you are like, what? Well, I live by faith. No. I want you to make intentional decisions to be very healthy. Be because understand that when you are not healthy, you are not going to serve God the way God wants you to be used. Oh, you guys didn't, didn't know that. So, so you do whatever you can to be healthy. Now, in order for you to stay healthy, you have to watch what you eat. The, there are some of us who don't care what we eat. And I want you to start caring what you eat as of today. Be, because the food industry in America intentionally work with the CDC. Yeah. Yeah. True. 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 Now, CDC is not, it, it's, it's not, let, let me not go there. They, they will intentionally put stuff in your, in your burgers, in what you call those, the hot dogs, that some of you love the hot dogs. Those are not your friends. That's poison to your body. Are, are we guys together? I'm already offending some of you. I'm doing a good job. If you're offended, that's a good job. So, make intentional decisions this year to eat healthy so that you can stay healthy. 
Because remember that food actually replenishes the body. When I was young, we didn't have no cancers and kidney failures because we ate what my grandmother was growing in the backyard. As soon as we knew what KFC was in Zambia, we started getting all these, all these kind of complications with kidneys and stuff. Are we together? Once a year, I eat burger. Once I eat one burger every year. It's an intentional, I, I, I make that decision. Because I don't want to be, to get to a place where, my, you know, my, 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 my body is so broken, I'm not able to stand here. Y'all pray for your pastor. He's been, mm -mm. I'm the one who does the praying. You, you guys, if you are going to be praying for me, you'll be praying for me for other things. Are we together? Yes. Tell your neighbor, be healthy, be healthy. The, rest of the, way, the rest of the year. That's challenge number one. So, some of you, you have to wake up an hour early, go to the gym, or walk around your neighborhood. Yeah, he calls it a prayer walk. You, you gain access in the spirit and you lose a pound. Hallelujah. Woo, we get healthy, anointed people. I'm telling you. You think driving to the mailbox is cute. That's not cute. <laughs> there are people who drive to the mailbox. <laughs> the, second, the second challenge I, I gave everyone on my, my page that I want to give you guys to is some of you, you are already there, but to an average person, I want to challenge you in the next 12 months to have an income of $100,000. When you do $100,000 every month, it comes down to about $8,600 a month. $8,600 a month, it comes down to $2,000, about $2,000 a week. It comes down to $296 a day. It comes down, if you are going to work for 24 hours, it's going to be uh, about $15 an hour, the whole 24 hours, the whole year, you are going to make $100,000. Now, you can't work 24 hours, so what do you do? You come up with side hustles. Uh, Dr. Lungi, a side hustle is a... Uh, <laughs> she's been too sanctified, she don't know what a side hustle is. <laughs> Get, come up with something to do on the side. You know, with the internet, you don't have to leave your house. You can create an Amazon account. Some of those shoes, they still have tags. You bought them 15 years ago. Sell them on, on eBay and Amazon. You guys are way too quiet. I'm your pastor. I'm here to tell you what to do. How you're going to come out. Oh, I'm believing God for financial breakthrough. I'm just giving you away. You go to places like DD's, you will find some of the handbags that were in rows. You know, Ross would come up with the latest handbags for, 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 for $59.99. If they are not bought in three years, they go to Didi's for $4. You buy those, put them online for $19, somebody will buy them. You don't know that. You go to Harry Hines, there are some of those shoes that look like they're million dollar shoes. They, are, they, sparkle all of, they sparkle all over the place. <laughs> Seven dollars a shoe, a pair, seven dollars. Buy that, put it online for 17 dollars. You just made 10 dollars. All you have to do is pray, God, let me sell 100 pairs a month. I'm teaching you how to break the, the spirit of poverty. Some of you, it's my grandmother in the village. Leave the old woman alone. <laughs> the, it's easy to make money in our generation. Back in the days, people had to go underground in the mines. They had to go cutting stuff, welding stuff. Nowadays, on your phone, you can run your eBay or Amazon. Go to a thrift store. Thrift store. You got, you got used, good used shoes, handbags, for $1.99. Yeah. You sell them on eBay. For $9, you're making $8 a piece. All you do is pray 100 pieces a month. I'm giving you a $100,000 challenge. How many of you are going to challenge yourself this year? hundred thousand dollars those of you that are already making something come on double it Amen. double it 
We cannot continue running a church of people that are still believing God for $26,000 a year. No, that's not right. God has given us many, many, many ways of increasing our income. And if you are a member of this church, you better not think being on welfare is, is, a, is a blessing. No, that's a curse. Section A, all of them, that's a curse. The devil designed all of that to keep you on that level. If, 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 let, me, let me tell you this. I know some of you are angry. If, if you have like nothing else, you can use that for a month or two. Bounce off of it. Don't sit on it for the rest of your life. Those of you that are not clapping, may God open your ears. <laughs> Am I challenging you to do good things? Yes. Now, to make $100,000, it means there's a lot of unnecessary stuff we have to cut out. An example, eating out, you must this year. So I just love to eat out. Ah, I know where your money is going. <laughs> do you know if you eat out three times a day at $15, man of God, that you end up with $16,000? that you give to restaurants every year. $16,000. You and your wife, 30, almost $40,000. You and your two kids, you guys are burning $67,000 a year. The four of you. Oh, you know, I just like to spoil my children. Hey. When your children get to college, they will feel spoiled. Daddy, it's time to pay the tuition. I don't have any money. With a family of four, $100 a week when you go to Walmart, buy enough food. That's, you guys, that's $400 a month versus $16,000 a month. Are we guys together? Yes. Am I challenging somebody? Yes. So this month, if you're going to eat out, choose one day out of the whole month. Yeah. That's true. I just don't like to cook. Don't come here praying for breakthrough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like to spend time in the kitchen, cook. Not only are you getting healthy, but you are saving money. You think those ads on TV advertising for Chick-fil-A, you think they love you? No, they are targeting your pockets. Am I helping somebody? Am I helping somebody? Then those of you that use weed, those of you that use weed, it relaxes me. Let me tell you how it relaxes you. It's $20 a small thing. Yeah. And most of the people that are addicted to weed, they smoke three times a day. That's $60 a day. Yeah. The whole year, they smoke nearly $30,000. Those of you that smoke ordinary cigarettes, it's $10 a pack. Wow. If you smoke one pack a day, you are smoking nearly uh, $17,000 a, a year. In 20 years, $76,000 that you are smoking in 20, in 20 years. Those of you that drink alcohol, please don't go there, Pastor. Don't go there. Don't go there. Oh, Jesus, don't go there. <laughs> don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> Those of you that have been drinking at least 10, 10 years, it's $8. This is the research I did. $8 for the thing of over. Now, people that normally go, in order for you to get drunk, you are somewhere in the $300, $400. And that's those of you who drink cheap things. <laughs> those of you who drink really expensive stuff, you are in the 500 range. And most of the people that drink, they don't drink once a month. They drink every week. So if you are drinking $500 every day, three times that's $1,500 a week. You multiply that times 12. The, you, you would have built mansions. You are... Uh, but the problem is you drink, you pee your money. You are peeing your money. And yet you are blaming the devil. The devil is after, no, you are peeing your money. You are smoking your money. You are eating your money. <laughs> I want to challenge you this year. This year, be a good steward of what God has given you. Are we together? Yes. So if you are going to get to a hundred thousand, and then there are some of you who just love to drive around everywhere. I'm just going for a drive. 
It's $2.99 a gallon. Uh-uh. We got first time. You want to meet somebody. Hi, how you doing? I'm not driving to your house just to hang out. It better be something constructive. Am I helping somebody? Lastly, I want to challenge everyone here to increase your spirituality this year. Amen. You cannot be a Christian who goes to church once a year. No. Or some of us, we actually have upgraded once a month. Mm -mm. Because the Bible says, if you're going to prosper, you're going to prosper as your soul prospers. Be in good health as your soul prospers. Right. So the prosperity of your soul is going to influence a lot of your life. That's why you have to get into the word this year. Amen. Challenge yourself. I want to read one chapter a day. At the end of the year, you would have done 365 day chapters. Amen. One chapter a day. Use it like medication. We drink medication most of the time, is it not three times a day? Yeah. In the morning, after lunch, and midnight, or before bedtime. Read one chapter three times a day, and watch what happens to you. In fact, scientists, they say, the more you read the Bible, the less depressed you become. Yeah. Scientists, they came up with it. Only the Bible has that power. Yeah. The Quran doesn't have it, but the Bible does. Yeah. So the word of God does something into your spirit. And then scientists have also come up and they said, I was showing some people in my office, they said that women who are religious, I don't know why they use religious, they live longer than women who don't go to church. These are scientists. Because they understand that every time you go to church, the, the spirit in the church revitalizes your body. So the devil knowing what church does to your health, he will stop you from going to church. You realize people who go through problems, but they are very committed with, with God, the problems don't have a control over their life. These are people who don't have the money, but you know, their brains are still intact. People who are not committed to God, they don't have money, they lose. I don't know, I'm, they start having panic attacks. Are we together? Yeah. These are three things I'm challenging everyone in the here yeah. and anyone that's watching. Number one is get a hundred thousand dollars. Number two, no. become very healthy, exercise. Amen. Part of my exercise is total fasting. Yeah. I, I discover total fasting burns fat, body fat. Yeah. It detoxes your whole body. Yeah. Man, I feel healthy afterwards. I mean, I don't do it to be healthy. I do it to be spiritual, but it also has healthy benefits. Yes. Talk about the doctors that are, are talking about intermediate fasting. Yeah. And Christians are like, no, I just don't like to fast. <laughs> and then the last one is going to be what? Becoming spiritual. How many of you are going to jump on that challenge? Amen. Amen. So, every month, look at yourself. Did you get to 8,600 a month? If you don't, whatever balance you have, put it on the next month. The next month you have to do twice as much. Amen. Come on. Yeah. If your goal is to lose 10 pounds this month, if you lose one pound, next month you're going to lose 19. <laughs> I know you didn't want to start a service like this, but I have to bring it to you. Hallelujah. Amen, congregation. On Wednesday, I was teaching from the subject, I am not of this world. Tell your neighbor, I'm not of this world. And we learned that the world is called the cosmos. So there are dimensions to the worlds. There are multiple worlds in this world. There are multiple worlds and there's one invisible world, but there are many unseen and unknown different worlds. So that cosmos would also mean that there is a demonic system that governs the world that we live in. There's a demonic system 
that governs the world that we live in. Then we also have the godly system or the godly kingdom that influenced the world that we live in as Christians. Many people don't understand, but all of us humans are somehow influenced by spirits. It's either God's spirits or the devil's spirit. Now ask your neighbor, what spirit influenced your life? Are we together today? One of the revelation I was given by the Lord is cosmos also means the alignment. And what we talked about is how the devil comes into bloodlines to create alignments. These alignments are also called generational curses. That sometimes you don't understand why you do what you do, but when you look back at your family tree, you will discover you are not the first person and most definitely may not be the last person who does that or who is going through that because it is a cycle. That is called an arrangement. An arrangement. Very pretty young woman. Very pretty young woman. And so, one of those days we were working late because one of the celebrities had reserved our, they had a, uh, like one of those premiere parties and the, 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 their event was going until four o'clock in the morning. And so my staff had been working the whole day. When I went to the kitchen, I found this young woman uh, snoofing some powder and, and she, 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 productive. And so, and so, that, and that started an addiction to cocaine. She said, I, he said, I became so addicted that I could not function without taking cocaine. And so, his, the quality of food dropped. It affected his restaurant. His wife and four kids, they left him. His restaurant shut down. Out of embarrassment, he went to the truck stop and he was hitchhiking and told the driver, wherever you are going, take me there. 
He says, for 20 years I've been on the streets of Dallas. Why? Because the devil had a Kratos set up to bring him down. Can, can I, I know we prayed on Wednesday. Can I pray that every Kratos, every woman, any man planted in your life as an agent from hell, may God pull them out of your life. You guys are way too quiet on me today. You look at the Bible, greater men, some of them did not fall because the devil showed up. You, you are talking to the devils of this world. As fierce as David was, the devil used a woman to bring him down. You guys are way too quiet on me today. Because the devil has always been using Kratos. But understand that there is a Kratos from heaven too. That if God is going to bless you, God is going to use a person to bring you to that place where you need to be. This is the reason you have to check your attitude. Because there are some of us who are not in your life to give you money. But we are in your life to connect you divinely. I think I'm speaking good today. So if you don't check your attitude, you are going to mess up that Kratos. Tell your neighbor, I'm sent from God. Divinely connect you to your assignment. That's what Kratos means. Today we are in John chapter 1 verse 11. And as I begin to, to preach, I know that it's a little quiet, but I want the church to wake up and preach back to me. Is that okay? Can we preach this together? Yes. John chapter 1 and verses number 11. We'll read from verse 11, 12, 13, and 14. Thank you, Jesus. And what I'm going to do today is, this is very massive. I am going to split this title into part one and part two. But tonight I'm going to go into very deep, deep revelation. And then we're going to spend a lot of time in prayer. Because what God wants to do is to release you from the dimension of this earth into the dimensions of the spirit. Amen. So, I, I want to encourage you. I don't know if... You know, I'm going to pray that tonight the, the, the weather is going to get, you know, either stay the same or to be a little bit warmer Amen. so that we can come back and just go deeper into the things of God. Are we ready? Yes. John chapter 1 verse 11. Everybody as loud as we can, go. Uh-huh. Let, let's, do, let's do that one more time. But as many as have received him, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. All right, there we go. <laughs> Verse 13, everybody as loud as we can, go. Which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh. Uh huh. Verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelled among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten son of the father, full of grace and truth. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the deep understanding. Open our ears, open our mind, and let the light of God to shine inside of us. In Jesus' name, and everybody say amen. Amen. So we are on the, on, the, on, the, on the title established in God. The subtitle is Sons of God. Amen. Sons of God. Tell your neighbor, I'm not just human. I'm not just human. I am a son of God. Son of God. All right. In, come on, daughters, you are also sons of God. Amen. Come on, daughters, you are also sons of God. Amen. Amen. We are not talking about the gender sons. We are talking about sons created in his image. Amen. So everybody say, I am. I am. Not just a man. Not just a man. 
I, I want us to understand very well that the devil has been trying for generations to limit you to just a man. Yeah. Yeah. This is the reason some of you have accepted your own faults, your own weaknesses and failures, so that he can limit you from being a perfect creature. Come on. Come on. That, that's the reason we believe that I am not supposed to be perfect because I'm a man. But, but do you understand that when you step out of the flesh into the spirit, then you have stepped out of imperfection into perfection. You guys, I love these guys over there. The, the rest of you too quiet. So, so, so understand that it is possible for a man to walk into perfection. Be, because you have the ability through the sonship to become perfect. I, I, I need us to break that. That, that that lie that has been told to us that no man is perfect I, I want us to break that I want us to break that because the Bible declares that Jesus Christ came in the form of a man and yet he was perfect what was Jesus perfect do you believe that the spirit of Jesus lives in you? Yes. So you have the spirit of a perfect Christ that lives in the imperfect body. What happens to the body when it comes under the influence of a, of a perfect Christ is that it begins to produce... Sorry about that, guys. It, when that happens, it throws me off. But thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> we are not going to be interrupted. <laughs> Amen. And I know some of you are like, who is about to lose it? Who is about <laughs> Not today, devil. <laughs> not today. <laughs> not today. Not today. Tell your neighbor, if no one is perfect... God is expecting you to put on the spirit of Christ, which is the spirit of a perfect Christ. Never should you allow that no man is perfect to be part of your vocabulary. Oh, that amen needs to be louder today. Amen. I need you guys to fix it. I can hear the feedbacks over here. That if, if no man is perfect, you can take your imperfection. I am pressing to be like Jesus. Amen. I am pressing on to be like Jesus. So our title for today is Sons of God. Amen. Sons of God. I, I want to begin by saying, ladies and gentlemen, that after the fall of man, when Adam and Eve fell... God began to look for humans that he would call into the sonship with him. Because on earth, no one was in the right standing with God. And so God would come into cities, he would come into homes, and he would come into bloodlines because God was looking for someone that he would build a personal relationship with. And when we talk about a relationship, we are not talking about a religious relationship. We are talking about a personal relationship with God. Amen. Come on, Holy Ghost. Amen. And in every generation, God has always found one man. Amen. In every generation. When you read the Bible, in every generation, God has always found one man. In the Abrahamic generation, God found Abraham. Yes. In the generation of Isaac, God found Isaac. In the generation of Jacob, God found Jacob. In the generation of Moses, God found Moses. In the generation of David, David God found David. David. In the generation of Ruth, God found a woman called Ruth and he built a relationship with. Can I declare that in our generation that God has found you? Oh, the devil is not going to get his way today. That, that's the reason God is drawing you out of your history. God is drawing you out of weakness. God is drawing you out of sin. God is drawing you out of sickness because God is looking for someone he can build a relationship with. Yeah. To become sons of God. Yeah. 
So watch this now. Let, let's look at Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6, the Bible says that the human race began to increase. And every time the human race is increasing, also sin increase. Yeah. And as sin is increasing, God begins to look for that one man or one woman through whom he can have a relationship with. Amen. That's right. Genesis chapter 6, please. And we look at verse 5, 6, 7, and 8. Genesis chapter 6 from verse 5. And the Bible declares, And God saw that the wickedness of men was great in the earth. The wickedness of men was great in the earth. Understand this, ladies and gentlemen, that in the midst of the growing wickedness, God is looking for someone that is going to stand out of the wickedness. I, I do believe that's the reason you are here today is because God has called you out of a wicked generation. God has called you out of a generation that is walking in the craving of the patterns of this world. Everything they are yearning for is seen, but God is calling you and that's the reason deeper calls unto deep. Yeah. Oh, there we go. I like what you guys are doing with my sound. It sounds better already. Yeah. Come on, tell your neighbor there's a call on my life. There's a call. Now, if God is calling you, you are the only one that's going to hear the call. Amen. The problem with many of us is we love to consult others. Do you think God is calling me? Do you think God has chosen me? Do you think I want you to know that many times when God calls you, not even your brother or your sister or your mother will acknowledge that. Amen. That's the reason when you hear the call, stop everything you are doing and run towards God. Amen. 